Hey guys, it's Allison with Baby Stepping to Freedom. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you have probably not seen the changes in my garden over the past two months since I showed it last here on YouTube. So I wanted to do another garden tour because as you can see, it's drastically different than my last garden tour two months ago. Um, it is crazy, out of control, so I thought I'd take you through the changes in the garden, what we're growing. I'm also planning on doing a little garden maintenance today and trimming up my tomato plants, which have just started growing out of control. It, this is very new to me. I'm a novice gardener. I This is really my first real garden I've ever had. So I watched some YouTube videos this morning on how to prune tomato plants and I'm gonna do that today and take you along for the ride. If you haven't checked out my last garden tour video, I talked about how we built this garden, how much it all cost us, and the process to getting to this point. So check that video out if you haven't already. Also, if you're new here, make sure you scroll down and subscribe to my channel where I will be posting new videos every week. So here is the garden. It has grown dramatically since the last time I posted a video. Everything that we planted originally is still here and it's just like gone crazy. So let's just start over here on this end and we'll just talk about everything that is planted. So this right here is a yellow tomato. I don't know exactly what it's called. Pear tomato. Um, this is the one plant that we didn't use new soil or the alpaca poop fertilizer on. It's still doing okay, but it's much more subdued than the rest of my tomato plant. So that's just there in a pot that I already had. Next to that, we have the basil, which as you can see is crazy. It's also starting to flower. So that means I need to start trimming it up and get that used. Underneath there's some radishes that are struggling. As you can see, there's some bugs eating it. And also the basil is just completely taken over the radishes and the radishes just are having a hard time growing. The good thing though, is this is my second batch of radishes. So I'm not too worried about them. I might try and trim up the basil a little bit to get the radishes uncovered, but you know, it is what it is. Next to that, we have beets. I had attempted one round of beets in the very beginning and the seeds did not grow. Um, we had to put in some new sprinklers in this area where all the seeds were because there were some areas that had been missed. So as you can see, we have drip irrigation in there and each little plant has its own sprinkler system. So we had to add some sprinklers into that because the beets were not getting watered. That same thing happened with the carrots. As you can see, the carrots are kind of struggling. I think part of the reason that they're struggling is these giant sunflowers. Whoa, they're huge sunflowers. Um, so they're kind of making the carrots be in the shade a lot. So they're struggling to grow, but this is also the second round of carrot seeds because the first round didn't grow due to our watering issue. So some of these bigger seed or bigger plants, I should say, are from the first round and then the smaller ones over here are from the second round. So those are still going. And then next is the green onions. That's from the first round. I don't really know when to pick them. I don't think they're ready yet, but the green onions still going. As I mentioned back here, those are sunflowers. They are huge. They haven't started flowering yet, but they're big and creating a lot of shade. I probably won't put sunflowers or this many sunflowers in next year. I don't know, we'll see. They've gotten a lot bigger than I thought they would. They are mammoth sunflowers. That is what the, the package said, but I didn't really realize how mammoth they really were. Next is my row of peppers here, which are doing fantastic. As you can see, we have a giant pepper in there it is huge. That is supposed to be a red pepper, so I'm just letting it continue to grow until it turns red. Have banana peppers here. There's a bunch of them in there that need to be picked, actually. And then back behind there, some yellow peppers, orange peppers that are growing, and then all the way in the back are ghost peppers. We actually don't have any ghost peppers starting yet. I'm wondering if they're going to struggle because that plant is now in so much shade. 
I didn't realize that that plant was so much smaller than bell peppers. I probably would have planted it in the front like this one, but all learning things this year as we are figuring out how to garden. Next is our cucumbers, which are massive. We had to build this trellis because the cucumbers were growing into the corn and the peppers and it was causing the peppers to start losing a lot of leaves because they were wrapping their little growing arms, these growing arms around the pepper leaves and stems and it was breaking them off. So we built this trellis with just some wire fencing and staples and um, tied it together because it started falling over. And you know what, it's working because you can see the cucumbers starting to grow up the trellis on that side. It's not really growing up the trellis on this side, but that's okay, just one side. We have tons of cucumbers growing. Just kind of look in and just see like tons. They're just everywhere. So there's two types of cucumbers. There's a big one back there. The other one back on that side with all the yellow flowers is a Japanese cucumber. This one is just, I don't know, regular cucumber. So it's growing out into the yard. And then that one over there is growing into the back area of the garden, but we're just letting it go. Getting a lot of cucumbers. I've made lots of pickles so far this year. And then back here in the corner, we have corn. Look at how massive this corn is. It's all got the tassels on top. And this first row of corn, which is the early corn, has corn on the cob growing. You can see the little corn hair growing on those ones. And then I think there's a couple more. That back row has some as well that are growing. So we are going to have a ton of corn. This plant is an eggplant and I am trying to save it from being taken over by everything else around it. But as you can see, I'm not succeeding, but it's still doing pretty well. There's lots of growth in there and coming along. So I'm just doing my best to trim up the plants around it to try and give it as much sunlight as possible and hope that it works. As you can see next to that are massive zucchini plants. You can see how huge these leaves are. And then inside we have tons of zucchini growing. I probably have a few that I need to pick. There's a couple down there, you can see. So I have two zucchini plants that have gotten massive. And then next to that is a yellow squash, which also has gotten massive and has tons of squash. Oh my gosh, that one got huge. I'm trying to pick them before they get huge, but it happens in like a matter of seconds, it feels like. Next on this side is beans. These are bush beans, so they support themselves. They don't need any sort of trellis or anything to grow on. And within the plant, there are just tons of beans. Let's see if I can find a bunch. There's beans there. And this row of beans goes all the way back. And so I'm just getting tons of beans every time I come out here and pick them. Then I have a watermelon. As you can see, I have a good sized watermelon growing right there. I also have another watermelon growing right there and a little one right there. So, so far I have three decent sized watermelons growing. There's also little tiny ones coming out like right there. And this guy I feel like is going strong. Not quite as strong as this, which is my butternut squash. And it has just gone crazy in the past couple weeks. It was struggling for a while. I don't know if it was struggling. It just took a really long time to start growing. And before I knew it, I have tons of butternut squash. So you can see they're just getting bigger every single day. There's just tons of them. There's some there. And then over there, they are just getting crazy. So we're just kind of letting this grow and you know, it is what it is. We have decided this year to not worry about our lawn. As you can tell, our lawn is brown. We've stopped watering the lawn because it's expensive to water the lawn and we 
can't really cut it right now. So our lawn is dead. We don't have to cut it. And we're just letting the whole garden grow out into it. So that's what's happening there. Finally, we have the tomatoes. As you can see, the tomatoes are crazy, out of control. What I'm going to try to do today is trim them up, prune them so there's not as many huge branches that are growing out and down and into things. But we have tons of tomatoes starting. You can just see in the plant, there are just tomatoes everywhere. There's some back there. The problem is that they're so bushy that I can't even see all of the tomatoes that are ready. And so we're losing out on tomatoes because I'm not able to get it all picked. But we have three different kinds. We have a chocolate tomato, which is this one. You can see it's darker. Then we have two yellow tomatoes like that. And then these are the red cherry tomatoes. They're all cherry tomatoes, which is just because that's what Home Depot had when I went and bought plants. Next year, I'll do bigger tomatoes. And then finally, back here, there's three more huge sunflowers. That's the biggest one back there. It is probably over 10 feet tall at this point. It's massive and it's about to start flowering, but not quite. So you can see how out of control this jungle really is. So what I'm gonna do now is try my best to prune up this tomato plant because as you can see it's just growing into the zucchini and it's just going to be impossible for me to pick some of these plants so i'm going to try and find as many stems that just do not have a ton of tomatoes like this one does have some but it's a pretty long stem that grows out so i might might cut that one off as well as any other stems that just don't quite have tomatoes yet i'll probably lose some tomatoes but Hopefully it will help it grow healthier and produce more tomatoes. So I'm not even done pruning, but I think you get the idea. I have trimmed off tons of branches that have no tomatoes on it. I have lost some tomatoes. As you can see, I'm sweating because this is a lot of work to climb in the tomatoes and get all of these little uh, branches and things. But essentially, I'm just cutting off um, any of the branches that don't have any uh, tomato growth. So although I did lose some tomatoes, I would say the majority of the branches that I cut were just like branches and leaves. And so all of the nutrients from the tomatoes have been going to those stems instead of going to the tomatoes. And so it's losing a lot of nutrients. So there's tons and tons of tomatoes within the bush that I didn't even realize were there. And now they're exposed, they'll get some sunlight, the majority of the nutrients will now go to those tomatoes and I'll be able to pick what's there rather than not even knowing what's there. So this is a win-win, I think. The only lose would be if what I just did kills my tomato plants. I don't think it's going to, but it crossed my mind a few times. And also this was a little painful for me because these tomato bushes have been like awesome to watch grow and get huge but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to have tomato plants that you can't really pick the tomatoes off of so there we have it that is what i'm doing i will link down below the video that i used as a reference for how to cut the tomato plant um, which branches to look for and what tomatoes you can do it to and what tomatoes you can't do it to so that link will be down below all right there we have it the garden tour and just a little breakdown of pruning my tomato plants. I'm really hoping that that helps my tomato plants and doesn't actually kill them all, but they are looking a lot better. I can see all of the tomatoes and I think 
it's going to be a good thing. But like I said, this year is just a trial year. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it has worked out for me. I'm learning as I go. I'm looking things up when I can't figure out what is going on. And you know, it's just a learning process. So next year, my garden will probably be even better than this because I've learned so much along the way. So if you are considering making a garden of your own, I highly recommend it, even if you don't know what you're doing, because I don't know what I'm doing. And look at this monstrosity. It's crazy. And even though I'm kind of at the point where I have way more uh, produce that I know what to do with. I'm also learning how to preserve and freeze and make this stuff last longer. I've made pickles, I've frozen zucchini noodles, and also I've given a lot of stuff away, given stuff to my neighbors, um, and just kind of sharing the love of the garden. So we're saving money by filling our freezer with homegrown food and sharing. So it's been a great experience so far and we are super happy that we went through the work to build this massive garden and I can't wait to see how the garden season ends. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!